So here's an example of using the Establish Centerline tool to create a model from a high poly CAD source file to a lower poly version of the product. I'm just clicking on the three points to establish the center line. And you can skip. So if I want to skip uh, to have fewer vertexes in the line, that's fine. It's easier to work from the outside. If you have x-ray mode on, you can see the, where the line is on the inside, but it's not as intuitive as to where it's actually going to draw it to. So if you work from the outside, and just rest assured that it will put it in the right place inside the model. It's easier to work sometimes. And make sure you snap to endpoints and not midpoints to get the correct concentric location. So there it is down the center of the pen. So then we want to add the line segment for the end to reach to the end of the cap or the clicker. That's just hide and show rest of model. And I assign that to an accelerator key so I can just turn it on and off real quickly and work my way back and forth. So select draw profile, set it to a low poly, you know, 12 sided or 8 sided circle, then use the align profile, line it up, and then you have to adjust that to match the actual geometry. Then just start push pulling. In the push pull, that's what all the construction dots are for that were generated during established center line. So we can now snap to those with the push pull tool. And it's real easy to find the points that we need now. Then you select the face, scale it about the center, turn on the rest of the model, and just adjust it till it hits the outer surface. And then snap to each point along the center line as you go. And you can be as fine-grained as you want on this. I chose to select every segment in the source CAD file so that the smoothing of the barrel, so the curve on the barrel would be smooth, but you can limit that, take fewer segments if you want. Even at this stage, we could skip a point and go to the second point, but I'm just doing each one. And it's just visually lining it up till the scale is just at the outside of the skin of the existing CAD file. And that's close enough for what I'm trying to do. I'm just representing the geometry, not worrying about exact surface dimensions. And you can create the taper by doing those successive push-pulls and scales. And then you just offset when there's a vertical discontinuity in the profile. You use offset and then you push-pull the inner or outer piece as appropriate. So here I'll offset outwards to create a ledge and then I'll extrude the ledge forward to the dot on the center line get the inside in, erase that inner one, and scale the outside. So we've created the outside shell. Offset the tip. And again, the dots on the center line make it really easy to find those points quickly. Then I'll just draw in the actual curve as an arc for the tip of the pen. So you got to create a face, then you can select that face, Oops, create the face, and then select the path, and use follow me on that half circle profile, and you get the tip. And we'll do the same for the clicker end. Oops, first let's smooth these edges so that they don't show as lines. So you just adjust it till they're smoothed. Now that one's not working. Let's see. 
Oh, there was a face left over because we made a copy of a push-pull surface. So I'll just hide it, delete that out of the way, and now I can soften it. And then for the clicker end, we'll draw an arc on the end and sweep it around with Follow Me like we did the other one. So there's the pen. Let's separate it so you can see it separate from the CAD geometry. So you can see they look identical, and I would colorize it, but let's take a look at using the warehouse tools, the report tool. So I'll select the old pen, run a report, and you can see there's 10,800 polygons in that pen. And in the new pen, there's 886 polygons. Quite a big reduction.